Alleluia. Praise the Lord. Thank you for being with me. Let's pray. Oh God, I desire to worship the God of gods, the Lord of lords. You are Heavenly Father. You are Savior Jesus. You, the Holy Spirit. I just praise you, God, that you are one. And that you have made yourself one through us, through your blood, Jesus, shed on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. I thank you, Jesus, you live. And I thank you for some 3,000 years ago, you spoke through the prophet, the king of Israel, David. And you told him of a future you have for him in your kingdom forever and ever. Your beautiful kingdom in your beautiful sight. You told him that. He was looking forward to that when he left this world. And thank you, O oh Lord God, through your mercy and grace and our faith in you, Jesus, as the one who died on the cross, crucified for our sins and rose from the dead. We have this same promise to us of eternal life with you now and forever. So, Lord, help me to share your word properly at this time, I pray. And help us to worship you in everything and always. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. God's word from Psalm 27, from the words of David, King David of Israel, spoken uh, by him some 3,000 years ago, are still true today and true for us. God's word to us through the prophet David. Portions of Psalm 27. Of David. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Of course, no one is the answer. He's implying when he's saying this, no one we should be afraid of when the Lord is our salvation. So I started again, Psalm 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? And I want to also share this scripture. If you are brokenhearted, God says to this, this to you in Psalms 34, starting at verse 18. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones. Not one of them is broken. And that speaks of Jesus on the cross, remember. Always remember. Let's pray. I thank you that this scripture reminds us, God, that you are near the brokenhearted. You are near us. You are not far away. Oh, Lord God, and uh, when you come in us, Jesus, as our Lord and Savior, you are, as, you are as close as our breath to us, Lord. For you live in us through the Holy Spirit, God. And oh, God... I just thank you. May we always remember your love. You proved it on the cross. We're not one of your bones are broken, as the scripture foretold. Lord, and you died in our place for our sins, for the forgiveness of our sins. And we for eternally are thankful for that. And we thank you. You live today to live in us through the Holy Spirit to never leave us or forsake us. Amen. So back to Psalms uh, 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. He's my light. He shows me, Jesus shows me, is the light of the world. He shows me the way to the Father through faith in Him. He shows us to, to follow Him because He will light our path of our life. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. To whom shall I be afraid? Verse 4. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell 
that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. It just reminds us in everything, good and bad times, sing, praise the Lord. If you can't sing, praise him somehow. Oh, Lord God. <laughs> so that reminds me, we're singing to the Lord. And this song, Do Lord, Psalm 27, is, has uh, many of those words from that scripture in this song. So sing it with me, okay? My grandchildren, great-grandchildren to be, I believe. Sing it with me. Tap your foot. Praise the Lord. Till our race is won, we 
something that I write. Read the Word of God. Alright. Now, I shared last time some wow scriptures. And, uh, alright. Here's uh, Isaiah. The prophet Isaiah. God spoke through him and said these words to us that are real to us today. And this is Psalms 41 and I'm going to start with a portion of verse 9 because we are God's servant when he saves us, saves us from our sin. So Isaiah 41, uh, verse 9, in part says this, and then I continue on with verse 10. You, my servant, I have chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Now, including that scripture and what I'm going to read now, beginning at Isaiah 41, verse 8. But you, O Israel, my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, you whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest corners, saying to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you and not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Let us pray. Oh, Lord God, I just thank you for your word and how this is true to us as you're saying, my servant Israel, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend, that is us too. For that's who we are. Through faith in you, Jesus, we are also called Abraham's offspring. And you call us your servant, for you have saved us for your work, to work with you and walk through this world always with you Lord for you uphold us with your right hand you give us strength and may Lord God through all that we do walk with you fellowshipping with you listening to you talking to you asking help from you through everything that we we work to do in this life Lord for everything that we do we do it unto you as if we're doing it to you, God, to please you. Lord. So help me out to show even more how this is true, O oh Lord God, what I have thus prayed to you. I pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. All right. Remember last time when I read this? 
Isaiah 41, 8, I began, but you, Israel, and I said, you could put your own name there. And I said, but you, oh, Bob, my servant. And I said, well, you're not Bob. Well, maybe you are Bob there. <laughs> my son, Bob. But you put your name, my servant, for as Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you can say this. But you, and put your name there, my servant, Jacob, put your name there again, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham, my friend. We are God's friend. He is our Lord. When we are in Christ. Okay? I couldn't remember the scripture that, that told us uh, that uh, because we are in Christ, we are believers in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We're considered Abraham's offspring. I found it. Galatians 3.28. All right? New Testament, Galatians 3.28. Ah, hallelujah. I put my marker in here. Here we go. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring. Yeah, didn't lie. <laughs> Heirs according to promise. As God promised, Abraham, an inheritance, an inheritance in the, in the kingdom of God, an eternal city prepared for him and for us. It's our, our inheritance also that promises for us also because we are considered Abraham's offspring when we are in Christ. And we are in Christ when we have faith in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, our risen Lord and Savior that was once dead for the forgiveness of our sins so that we would never die but live with God forever, never be separated from God. And so, I didn't lie, <laughs> it's here. There is neither Jew, this is Galatians chapter three, all right, verse 28. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ. When we are in Christ, he looks at everyone. Everyone in Christ is equal. He doesn't see a separation of nationalities or male or female. God just sees us in Christ, in his blood, shed for us on the cross. You are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, we belong to him. Then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. So I go back here to Isaiah 41, beginning at verse 8. And you can put your name in here instead of Abraham's name, and instead of Israel's name, and instead of Jacob's name. They're all... <clears throat> They're all relatives of one another. Abraham was the father of Isaac. Isaac, the father of Jacob. So we are related to them. We are considered offspring of, of, of them when we are in Christ. So you can put your name in here instead of, instead of Israel, Jacob, and Abraham, okay? And I'll read this. Isaiah 41, 8. But you, oh, Bob. Okay, I won't do that. But you, Israel... My servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the offspring of Abraham. We should leave Abraham's name in there, shouldn't we? <laughs> the offspring of Abraham, my friend. Thank you, God, for making us our friend. Your friend, I mean. When you are our Lord and our God. You whom I, verse 9, you whom I took from the ends of the earth and called from its farthest corners. God knew us before the foundation of the world. He knew us. Saying to you, you are my servant. I have chosen you. 
and not cast you off. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Thank you, O Lord God. You uphold us with your righteous right hand. You will never let us out of your hand. You will uphold us through all we do in life. And someday you will take us home to be living in your presence, in your temple. Is it, That's in your presence. And we will be able to, as Psalm 27 says, we will be able to behold the beauty of the Lord and to meditate in your temple. And I thank you that our loved ones, their soul is now doing that in heaven with you, the, uh, our loved ones who are your children, who are the offspring of Abraham. You know that Galatians and Galatians, it, it connects about faith, uh, righteousness through faith, uh, a, a great statement in here in Galatians. So I just want to get that because we're still going to, Lord willing, get to, to Romans. All right. And uh, which one do I want to pick here? Mm, okay, I like this one. Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified. This is what Paul, is, as an, a believer in it, when <laughs> Paul, being in Christ, he can say this. Galatians 2.20, it's recorded. I have been crucified with Christ. Because he believes in Christ's crucifixion for the forgiveness of his sins. Pain, Jesus paid the penalty for our sins with his death. That's the, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord, the scripture says. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Christ being living in us. Never leave us. And the life I now live, so he, said, he still says, I, it is, this is my life, but his life has been given to Jesus. That's why he said that before. I've been crucified with Christ. He knows he still had, his life is still, is, is, is still there. He lives. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. I like that. In the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. We need to keep living by faith even when we doubt. Uh, if, if we ever doubt that God loves us, we got to keep the faith. Same faith that we believed in him as, as our Lord and Savior. Keep that. And when we wait upon the Lord, he will. Uh, waiting upon the Lord is having faith. He will show us the way. He will give us the strength we need in every situation. He will take us to the place we need to be with Him. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me. I like that. Who loved me. That's why He went to the cross. Who loved me and gave Himself for me. And uh, Justified. Okay, justified by faith as we're talking Romans 3. Verse uh, Galatians 2.15 We ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we, so we also have believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law, because by works of the law, no one will be justified. And that goes along, along with what it says in Romans chapter 3. Thank you, Lord God, for revealing your truth, your love to us. Lord, may we always praise you. And do, Lord. Lord, you do remember us. You know us fully. Amen. Thank you for being with us.